we are so conditioned that our condition precludes us from observing that we're water beings on a water planet and that everything else on the planet is also water-like and that the way that we treat our water with such disdain, with such lack of consideration is an example of the experience that we're having with our health and our relationships because our relationship with water is one of our most pertinent relationships. Is, as you say that, one of the thoughts that are occurring with, to me is our relationship with water is our relationship with life. Welcome to Call for the Truth. I am Lota of the Sun, and this is Tavares of the Sun. And today we have some interesting topics to speak about. We will be speaking about one of our favorite things, water, and what's going on in the world with our water. And then we'll be later on Rumble talking about some current events that are taking place in our world. We're excited to speak with you today, but before we begin, Tavares, will you call for the truth? Well, certainly, and we encourage all of you tuning in to join us in this call for the truth. Shall we call forth the frequency of truth to come forward? Shall we call to see the truth in all that we see? Shall we call to hear the truth in all that we hear? Shall we call to speak the truth, calling forth the courage to speak the truth? Shall we call forth nothing less than the truth to come forward into our experience? And now that we are here in the frequency of truth, we are talking about water today. Yes, yes. Uh, um, most of us know or are aware that our world is a corporation. It is a worldwide network of corporate power. And the corporations are buying up most of the water. And that there's ample evidence through light research you can easily see that water is a huge commodity that even though creation gave it to us, it is now owned by individuals and mega corporations. We also are um, in the understanding that we pay for our water, but have you really thought about what happens with the water? When you um, go to the faucet, to get water, what are you actually getting? The reality is, is that the water is tied to the sewer system. And the water that is clean to the degree that the current science is able to clean it does not clean the frequency. So the frequency of someone's medication or the frequency of the depression in their urine or the frequency of the disease in their body fluids even though the particulate matter is removed, the frequency of whatever that is is still in the water. So we are very aware of that. And at Abdusan, we go through extraordinary um, 
extents to make sure that we have clean water. So if you go to our website at Of The Sun, you'll see that we sell environmental water units. We work with the energy and frequency of water in our healing products and in our frequency waters, which are infused with the frequencies that are life-giving in a variety of different ways. But there's a lot going on with water right now. And um, in our world, it's important for us to remember that everything eats, including the corporation, and that everything feeds. So what are we feeding the mega corporations that eat? Are we giving them our obedience and our allegiance? Are they the authority over us? So we would like to share with you some of the news stories that are happening right now. So Tavares, you have something? Uh, yes. So one of the things that we've been seeing going on with the water, and uh, this is happening on many coastal parts of the U.S. and even international, but one of the, one of the latest was in the Florida Keys. There's a lot of odd behavior that's taking place with the animals in the water. And for example, the Florida Wildlife Conservatory, they were, the scientists there were trying to explain what was taking place and they were measuring the oxygen levels, they were measuring the bacteria levels and everything appeared normal. Uh, but yet they could not understand why the wild behavior. And when I say wild behavior, an example of this is you'd have a fish just kind of barrel rolling in stationary, just flipping, 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 flipping. Uh, some of them um, beaching themselves and the behavior is just erratic. Um, this didn't happen in the Florida Keys. I, I don't recall exactly where. We'll have to bring up a, a video or a link. But uh, there were uh, several wells, a pot of wells that were beaching themselves. And even when the locals were trying to help push them out to the ocean, they swam further down, uh, down the beach where the humans couldn't get to them and they beached themselves. So there was something happening where they did not want to be in the water. And um, we were speaking a bit on this, how there's anomalies happening in the Arctic where it's measurable through um, satellite technology. They're, they're measuring um, the, not only the temperatures, but uh, you could literally see what appears to be, again, an anomaly. And uh, we'll have to show a video of this as well, where it's, it's reaching and stretching. It looks um, inorganic compared to the rest of the, the readings on the radar. And again, it's emitting. And then we also have the heating of the water. So there, there's quite a bit that's taken place with the ocean. Yes. I uh, remember when there was the big tsunami in Indonesia. And I remember learning something. I remembered that the people who got away were the people who paid attention to the animals. The people who ran out into the ocean after the wave went out did not fare well. But the people who were the natives, when they saw all the animals leaving, they left too. So it is our understanding that coastal issues, there's something free in frequency that is making the fish come out of the water. The uh, scenario with the whale was very stark where several extremely large whales beached themselves and the humans kept trying to help them get back in and wouldn't leave them alone. So they actually left where humans were and re they did not want to be in the water. So we see fish jumping out of the water, twirling around. Things are about to happen with the water on the coastal regions. This most recent report was near Key West. I say look for events to so be well. taking place because of the frequency is making the fish who live in the water not want to live there. It's something to really think about because the whales prefer death yes. over whatever it was. And right. as we know, uh, these animals are very hypersensitive to frequency, sonar and things of that nature, the electromagnetic spectrum. So whatever was happening, it, was, it appeared as if it was a form of torture of some yes. sort. Not only are they sensitive, they're intelligent. They're extremely intelligent. So 
if they're like, no, we don't want to be in the water, we should pay attention to that. And so this, we're seeing example after example after example, and it reminds me of an ancient story. So I'd like to um, share with you this ancient short story. This is called The Ancient Water Story. A wise man warned that one day all water would disappear and nobody listened to him. However, the man stored the water for such a day. And then the day came that all the water was gone and the man drank the water that he had stored. Then one day the water returned and everyone thirstily drank the water and they became crazy and insane. And the, uh, and the man who had stored the water drank his water. He remained the same man, the one sane man left amongst the madmen. They called him mad because he was sane and they were insane. Then the day came that he poured out all of the water that he had stored and he drank the water that they were drinking and then became mad and the madmen said that he was sane. So this is an ancient story. It seems to be speaking about the time that we live in, the water that we drink from the faucet with the minerals, with the frequencies, with the level of intelligence that this dimension operates at. It's toilet water and it, you know, we need to do better for ourselves. So as the fish are jumping out of the water and acting crazy, so it is that what happens in our environment is happening to us. Who do you know who is behaving in an erratic manner? You know, do you want to share that experience with them? So that's part of what we wanted to say. We are, um, the water is a divine gift. We are in great reverence to it. We encourage you to raise its vibration, to speak to it, and to recognize that you are not the only conscious being, that we have not evolved to the evolutionary pinnacle of our experience. There's much still to be learned about the water, the land, the air, fire. So we wanted to speak a little bit more about that. I want to bring something up. So many of the people who are listening, they are likely familiar with Dr. Emoto, the different experiences, uh, experiments of imprinting the molecular structure of water and uh, how frequency does matter. Yeah. You know, at, at the atomic, the molecular level. And so we are water. We know this. However, you, you're speaking of water in a way that's a little different. You say water is conscious, it's alive. It's as if um, it's an intelligent entity, not just this liquid that we drink to nourish ourselves mm -hmm. when we're uh, to rehydrate ourselves. So uh, would you kind of expound a little more on this idea of water being a, a conscious being of some sort? It is the fluid of creation. Remember that we are uh, we developed in a sack of water inside our mothers. That is not water, but it is water. It is the ambiotic fluid, which is the fluid of life that we exist in. Our oxygen comes, all of our nutrients are in it. And even though we're in that sack for the nine months during the time of our development, when we come into this dimension, into this world, we come in in a world that's full of water. There are clouds above us and water below us. We're breathing in water in the atmosphere. We're still in this environment of great protection through creation, like we're in water as water in water in water. You know, and it goes on that the cells are filled with water. The molecular structure of all of life has to do with water. The environment from which we come into what we are ourselves, our planet is 70% water, our bodies are 70% water, our brains are like 90% water as babies. Babies 
are like 90% water that's in, in their early stages. So all of this is so relevant to our world, but we're not really paying attention. So, so it is with the fish. So it is with the fish. They are also born in a sack of water, into water as water beings, in their world of water that has now become contaminated, not unlike our world of water where we get our water and it's contaminated. <clears throat> so we are all in this same experience together. The fish are no different than us. We're no different than the wells. The wells are no different than us. We are having, we are struggling to survive. We are struggling to find clean water. We are struggling to be in environments that support us. So all of this is the same thing. So we encourage you to move into the understanding that just as Mother Earth is living in sentient and conscious, so is the water and so is the air and so is the fire and so is the earth, that for you to lean into or embrace the idea that it is you. The water is you. You are it. And you may speak to yourself. And you may ask yourself to raise up to a level where you will be nourishing to self. So everything is your extended self. So this yes. is, you're actually taking it to where I wanted to go. I'm going to make a statement and then a follow-up question to continue with this. So um, clearly there's no separation. Right. You know, although we're on land... Right. We're going through the same struggle as those in the ocean. It's so interesting because it, it feels separate, but it's not. Yeah. And uh, so, again, the, the imperativeness of seeing life through that lens of oneness as much as possible. What we do to them, we do to ourselves and vice versa. The same water that's being contaminated with them is the same water that we're breathing in through the air and drinking, etc. So um, get a little bit esoteric. I was thinking about how water is associated with creation and uh, creation energy and then ourselves and our sacral and the idea of like what we're creating, what we're putting out there, what we're, what we're receiving back in life. And over time, humanity's relationship with water and uh, the contaminating of water in both inner and outer. But you, again, you were giving the solution because in my mind, I'm like, okay, we know that if we want to change something that's outside, and we spoke about this previously regarding larger world events that seem so massive, out of reach, where it feels like we can't really address it. But if we honor uh, universal laws and principles, we know that we can influence the larger by addressing what's in our immediate reality and in our internal world. So you're talking about speak to your water, talk to your water. Would you like go deeper into yes. this idea? I'll even give an example of what you can do. Um, if you're in the shower or if you're in the bath, you can join, you can consciously will yourself to be in uh, compliance and in unity and harmony with the water that you're in or standing under the water that you're drinking, you can connect even if you have only one drop. If there's one drop of rain on the window and you're looking at it, you can connect with all water from that one drop and you can infuse it with the highest possible vibration and bring to it the respect and the dignity that will bring it back to its living condition. The water is asleep or dead it's contaminated and overwhelmed, but you have the individual and collective power to change that because someone says they own it doesn't mean they own it. It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> it's a very ridiculous construct. So the um, substance that we think of as H2O, hydrogen is the most common element in the universe and oxygen and we're, not, we're no longer breathing and drinking just that. Everything has something else in it, but mm -hmm. none of it is beyond our ability to um, bring back into its original form because the blueprint, the uh, molecular memory still exists. Would you speak on the mechanics of this? Because some people intellectually get it, but when it comes to the practicality of 
let me speak to my water and my body and inform myself to change my my molecular state of being and how that influences everything right yeah, it, it's, most people like it's just shallow so what what are like well, the mechanics th- this? this may or may not be like the the master class for that no well true We're, this is youtube <laughs> so i guess that y'all need to take a class here. <laughs> however however it is not complicated it is really the willingness to um subvert or to suspend any disbelief long enough to look at your fingers and know that the fluid that's in there, the blood is mixed with water. The fluid that's in the body is water that you are in a house that's probably has water underneath the ground and clouds above it and that there's moisture in the air, that you're, this is a water planet. We are water beings. Nobody told us. Vibration. We are a universal remedy of support, an ally infused with positive frequencies and biophotonic light particles intended to return one to the greater whole of one's organic nature. Within our layered structure exists an opportunity for metamorphosis prompting divine healing energies of light to awaken your original composition, that which has been irritated by inorganic substances through mental, emotional, and physical material. We are navigators, those who operate by way of your conscious thought and directive, exponentially moving to the physical areas of stuck emotion within the body that are in need of restoration. When engaged with us, we identify and mirror the called upon frequencies of lower vibratory notion for it to see itself in transmutation while awakening that which is dormant to shift into the rectification of optimum balance and functionality. You know, but it's so obvious and it's all around. It is so obvious that we are water beings and we're in uh, not so, it is denial, but it's not just denial. We are unable to observe it. We are so conditioned that our condition precludes us from observing that we're water beings on a water planet and that everything else on the planet is also water-like and that the way that we treat our water with such disdain, with such lack of consideration is an example of the experience that we're having with our health and our relationships because our relationship with water is one of our most pertinent relationships. As you say that, one of the thoughts that are occurring to me is our relationship with water is our relationship with life. And thinking about how we often speak about what are the choices that we're making, yes. life-inspired uh, choices or anti-life-inspired choices. And again, um, we can look at this in, from so many different directions, what we've allowed and permitted to take place with major corporations and the monopoly on water yes. or, um, again, the lack of reverence for water outside or inside, right. you know, is it can equate to our lack of reverence for, for the idea of life. And self, life and self. So I'll give a very basic technique. Um, we don't know how to drink water. So once we have water and we're prepared to drink it, whether we have structured it by putting it in the sun or keeping it in blue bottles or asking it to awaken for us once any of those things are done and we take the water when we drink the water hold the water in your mouth for a moment because once it's awakened it has power that goes up to the brain and it comes it goes through the palate and you can feel it if you were to drink the water and just you know, wait a moment to let the power go, then you swallow 
and then the rest of the water goes through the system of the digestion, and then the brain doesn't have to wait for the circuit to come back around. So that's one way to be in honor. The bigger idea is recognize that water is you and that you are life and that water is the life-giving fluid that animates and makes it possible for you not to be dried out so that you're not, you know, a potato chip, mm. you know, because that's the alternative that dried out leaf that falls off the tree, that's what happens without water. Yeah. So I think this is a, a small technique, but a big idea. So I'd like to offer that. I'd to like our... to just say that um, through the lens of the principle of oneness, I feel like it, it magnifies what seems small. Yes. You know, because we go through life and just, oh, uh, just drinking our water and with no thought involved but this idea of this conscious engagement i'm not just going to be on automatic mode yes. i'm going to take a moment to be in reverence to yes. be in respect gratitude yes for the water gratitude for yes. my other for me you know expressly the water because i am that yes and let it do what it do so i have spoken to the water and this is a couple of years ago the water told me it would no longer come where it was not respected where it is not given honor and respect it will withdraw. So we have seen the deserts. That is what happens. Maybe some of us need to do that with certain things and people and situations. I think uh, the wisdom of the consciousness of, the, of this aspect of creation that is us is sharing with us something that we should consider. Because uh, if the water withdraws, what will we do? you know, what, what will happen. So each of us, through teaching our children and making sure that we are giving our attention, have the power. There is such a thing as critical mass. Everybody doesn't have to do it. Enough have to do it. Yes. And then the water can change. Once the water is no longer a shadow of itself, we get in, the water in the faucet is dead water. Right angles make the water go to sleep. The, it goes through pipes as right angles. We need to speak to it, to infuse it, to uh, remind it, to ask it, to awaken so that we can best benefit from it. And then it can also be free as we call to be free and sovereign. So must the water call to be free and sovereign. The water is already doing it. And um, I think we should pay attention and we should pay attention to our coastal areas when the fish and the things that live in the water are trying to come out. We might consider our next move along those same lines. So, Certainly. We're going to ad additionally talk about some news stories. So unless you have something else, we're going to move on to... Well, we could stop there. Um... You have something? Yeah, okay. I want to ask you to speak a little bit about vibration. Oh, we're so. always playing a commercial. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen it. But, uh, just briefly before we go into our next segment, we make a product here at Of the Sun that I've been making for many, many years. It is a conscious water. Our relationship with water has allowed us to operate with the consciousness of water in such a way that we are able to. Uh, have a product that you may speak to each individual person and have uh, a, a request you know you know my my head hurts or you know I need to work on my heart or I'm sleepy I'd like to be more awake and the water responds because the water has the power to respond and the water responds to the water it is speaking to the water inside of you and it appears to be miraculous to the third dimensional mind, but it makes all the sense in the world that your level of consciousness of knowing that you can speak to your water can change your water. Yes. So that's there's more to come and uh, you'll see something concerning it. For those who are listening, play that segment back. Just go back a minute or two because the explanation that you shared of the relationship of what the water does, what it's doing, 
and then knowing that it's capable of it is everything. It really is. It's everything. And, and for those who struggle with this, it's all right. You know, whatever part you can take, if you can suspend your disbelief long enough to believe more, good. You know, if you can't, it's all right. It's all right. Once you have heard this, you will be forever changed. It will always be something you have heard. So it, it becomes available to you when you're ready for it. Be gentle with yourself. And from here, we can go ahead and break. And if you'd like to join us, we're going to go into some news topics, some breaking news. Dun, dun, dun. Join us on the Rumble platform on uh, the channel La Ulta at the Sun, where we go deeper. So get your snorkeling gear. We're going to be uncensored. And I'll catch you in Bear Talks.